Hello, and welcome to World of Warbirds. I'm Brian Pierce. Hello, Warbirders. Before beginning, I'd like to welcome Timothy Stern, who just joined my Tiger Moth membership level, and also to David Hall and Minky Moo, who joined somewhat earlier. Thank you for keeping the channel going. This is a continuation of my Quest for Power series, so if you haven't watched the episodes on cylinders, supercharging, and turbo supercharging, don't miss them. But let's dive into this one. So far, to get more power out of our reciprocating piston engines, we've added more cylinders, we've made them bigger, and then we've used blowers of various kinds to push in more air. Today we're going to talk about injecting methanol and water into the mix. But before we do that, we need to talk about fuel-air mixtures. That's the red knob on your flight simulator quadrant. So what is mixture, and what does it do? Burning gasoline is a chemical reaction, and there is a perfect fuel-to-air ratio that will generate the most power. This ratio gets disrupted the moment the aircraft climbs away from the ground, as the ambient air pressure immediately begins to drop meaning that too much fuel is going in the cylinder compared to air. To describe this, we say that the mixture is rich. You might say that rich sounds good, but with an overly rich mixture, power is actually lost, and fuel is wasted as this happens. That's why piston engines have a mixture control to fine-tune this ratio. If this knob is pushed to the firewall, the fuel-air mixture is full-rich. And as the pilot pulls it back, it leans the mixture until there is too little fuel to burn and the engine is actually cut off. There is a perfect fuel-air mixture that generates the most power, and this is what the pilot is trying to achieve with the mixture setting. Now, if you're beginning to wonder when the heck Mr. World of Warbirds is going to talk about the water injection thing, I'm getting to it. So, a mixture that produces the best power burns hotter. That makes sense, right? With super and turbo supercharging, the high manifold pressures make the ingoing fuel air charge even hotter. But sometimes it gets so hot in the cylinder that the fuel ignites early before the spark plug fires, which is bad. This is known as pre-ignition or detonation. Now, they may not be exactly the same, but for the purposes of this video, I am using them as a synonym. Pre-ignition makes the engine run rough and robs power. Here's where things get really counterintuitive, so bear with me. A richer mixture actually helps cool the engine. Yes, you heard that right. Vaporizing the fuel going in absorbs some heat, and it does help cool the engine. But this overly rich mixture isn't the best for power. So, what to do? The answer was to spray something else in there to help cool the cylinders, and that something else was water. Now, when I first heard of water methanol injection systems that were used to get an extra boost of power, I figured it was the methanol that was adding the power. But no, in a 50-50 mix of alcohol and water, it was the water that was cooling the cylinders, so that the mixture could be run at its absolute max power hottest, and the alcohol was basically there as an antifreeze. In testing, it was found that when water injection was in use, the engine was markedly smoother, and the interior of the combustion chamber stayed extremely clean, with no carbon or varnish buildup on the piston crowns, valves, or ring packs. Due to the limited amount of water that could be brought along, this extra burst of energy was only used for takeoff and for WEP or War Emergency Power Combat situations. Time limits on these kind of systems were limited to about two 10 minute bursts of power, but the extra spurt of power was significant. For example, with the Grumman F6F Hellcat, the climb performance could be increased by almost 700 feet per minute and it could get 20 miles per hour extra in level speed. So, what allied aircraft were equipped with these water injection systems? Later models of Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, F-4U-1D Corsair, the aforementioned F-6F Hellcat, and Hawker Tempest Mark V could all be equipped. 
The Soviet Klimov VK-107B and later could be equipped with water injection, and these engines were used to power the MiG-7, PE-2, and Yak-3 and Yak-9. But what about Axis aircraft? The Nakajima Ki-84 Hayate fighter, known to the Allies as the Frank, was equipped with an HA-45 Homare engine that used water injection to aid the supercharger in giving the Ki-84 a rated 2,000 horsepower at takeoff, giving it the performance that rivaled the Allied fighters of the time. The German version of the system was known as MW-50, for Methanol Wasser 50, and was installed in Fuckerwolf FW 190 D and later variants, and Messerschmitt BF 109 G and later variants. Another system that was used by the Germans, but not by the Allies, was the GM 1, or Goring Mischung 1 system for injecting nitrous oxide into the engine. In this case, although there is still a cooling effect, as you are spraying cold liquid nitrous oxide directly into the supercharger intake, the main effect was the ability to increase the amount of fuel being burnt at high altitude by increasing the amount of oxygen in the fuel air charge. The Fuckerwolf TA-152H, which was an updated version of the FW-190, had been developed as a dedicated high altitude interceptor and so is equipped with both the GM-1 nitrous oxide system as well as the MW-50 water injection system. It was only produced in a very limited number. Kurt Tank, the designer of the 190 and the 152, himself credited these systems with saving his own life. In late 1944, while he was flying an unarmed TA-152H to get to a meeting, he was jumped by two P-51 Mustangs. By applying full power and engaging both boosting systems, he was able to speed ahead until the two Mustangs were no more than two dots at his six o'clock on the horizon. We have a couple more sections on this series to talk about. Superfuels and turbo compounding. So make sure you subscribe to not miss any new material. And remember that members get bonuses such as extra episodes, loyalty badges, the use of special Warbird emojis, shoutouts, and priority reply to comments, as well as the satisfaction of knowing that you are supporting the channel.